My name is Keith Mosley, and I was born in Union County, New Albany, Mississippi, in 1962. My mother's name is Betty Jo Mosley, and my father's name was Jamie Mosley. And um, at that time, you know, the times were hard, so my mom couldn't take care of three children. She already had two other siblings. She couldn't take care of us, and she gave me to my aunt which is my great aunt, and she raised me from 15 months old until I was 18, 17, 18 years old. And uh, I went on my own, and when I, you know, got married at age 18, had a wife, a new child, and, you know, I was being a husband and stuff. And uh, later on down the years, as I was growing, <laughs> while Oprah was raising me while I was growing, I lived in St. Mary's out Highway 30. And uh, me and my cousin, I had four or five fellow cousins, and we would get out there and make our bows and arrows. We would take a drink top and beat them over the end of a sapling stick and make the bows. And I messed around, I was pretty good at shooting. <laughs> I messed around and shot my cousin behind the ear <laughs> and skinned him up. We got a scar right now today. His name is Thomas Robinson. And uh, those were the good old days, but as I was growing, I stayed interested in bows. I took my brother's school picture money and bought my first bow <laughs> at Western Auto at the age of 12. And I got the worstest whooping it ever was for spending his picture money on the first bow. I didn't ever get to shoot it. But that same bow at Western Auto, my auntie turned around and, and bought it for me. And at that time, you know, it was like a lot of us children that stayed and it was the lower part of New Albany across the tracks, which is called the flat. A lot of older people know about the flat, and it was a little community down there. And uh, I would save my little change up from picking up bottles and go by the real arrows. Not thinking on how dangerous the bow was, we used to all be out there in the field, and I would shoot those arrows with the razor blade tips straight up in the air. Not thinking, you know, ain't nobody taught me anything about how dangerous they are. You know, I know they'll go through some, but you know, we I shoot up in there, everybody just run. You know, it was a dangerous thing. But yeah, that my the bow was a very big interest of mine, and um, the way that I got to being a shooter was I went and did uh, some time in the penitentiary. And when I got out in 2010, um, I I loved to hunt because my uncle raised me hunting and stuff, and it's just in my it's in my blood. And uh, I worked night shift, and I had a, a schoolmate of mine that was there, and I couldn't have a gun to go hunt. So I uh, asked him, "Do you know anybody want to sell a boat?" <laughs> he said, "Yeah, I know a fellow want to sell a boat." He won't fit the dollar for it. So, okay. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Now, this is one of my good friends from school. So, the night when we get paid, he comes in. I said, man, he got that bow out there? He said, yeah, but he won $100. I said, no, you can keep it. Because it went from 50 to 100 you know. Uh, so, he went back down to 50 and I bought that bow. Didn't know nothing about it. They had to look three pins on it, you know. And I bought it, and deer season coming around. I borrowed a tree stand from one of my other friends, a white friend of mine, and he showed me how to hook the tree stand up. So I went to the tree stand out there on the deer and I'm up in the tree. I see a deer, about 20 yards, and I drawed it back and I shot at that deer. My arrow was six to eight feet away from that deer. I didn't shoot a second arrow, because I know I'm looking at this deer through this peep hole, but I didn't know anything about the pin sites. So that kind of discouraged me. So what I did, I went to the uh, sports shop, Bond Sports Shop out here, and they was explaining about the pins, 20, 30, 40 yards. So he got the pins set just right at 20, 30, 40 yards. So I bought me a target. So I started practicing. And while in the backyard, you know, I walk off 20 yards and I start shooting the bullseye and 30 yards, and then I went to 40 yards. But now, while I'm practicing, I practice every day. And while I'm practicing in my backyard, it was right by the street. People would pass by there, you know, people that I grew up around and people of the neighborhood would pass by. Well, you don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're doing. 
as you watch, you watch and see. And um, I went on and just kept practicing. And then when I went back deer hunting again, I killed three deer in a row. And I got that good. And I was shooting my bulls out of the 20, 30, 40 yards. So I found out, the, you know, the kills on on the deer. So I killed three in a row. And um, they had a tournament. Let me see that tournament. Was that, it was at the fair. It was the first tournament. I had the oldest bow there. I had the camera with the cable on it. And uh, I could hear the people talking. What he doing here? He said, you know what? It didn't shake me, but I was expecting that, you know, by me being in a white person's sport. <laughs> it's just the truth, you know. So I held my, I held my composure. And uh, so the, the, the other contestants was up there practicing. And when I got up there, they said, what you doing? I said, I'm going to get some practice shots too. So I got I shot my practice shot. So went on and then as we competed, they had only first and second place. And I came in third. I didn't get no trophy. But that told me that I need to practice a little bit more and get me a better bow because everybody had new bows and I had the oldest thing there. And uh, later on, they messed around and had a, at the Tupelo furniture market. They had the outdoorsman extravaganza, and uh, they were gonna have an archery tournament. So I bumped around, looked around. I had Crawford Nesbitt had a PSE bow that he don't know nothing about a bow. Somebody gave him, and he let me use that bow. And uh, it was 100 contestants in, in the men's, and uh, I took that bow, and when my time came up, I shot. And I shot, and then after the whole tournament, I heard a lot of negative stuff said, but I just kept my composure. So I waited around, waited around, and then they gave out the, the rankings. And I came 15 out of the top 25 of 100. And that was in 2011. So from there, I said to myself, I'm going to shoot some more. I need to get me a real good bow. So I looked around on the internet and they started having the Christian Bowhunters Club up here at Highway 30 here in New Albany. So I found out where it was at. I'm going to go up here and compete with them, you know. So I went up there and first tournament, I came in maybe third. And I started, keep coming to the day tournaments, came in second. And I finally made it up to first. And when I finally made it up to first in the Hunters League, um, I spoke to a man that was there about you know anybody want to sell a professional boat he told me that he knew somebody but at that time i didn't know him. you know i didn't know how to get in contact with him so he gave me a number and i called the guy and i asked him how much did he want for that boat that he had hadn't even seen it i just needed me a professional boat so i called him he said give me eighteen hundred dollars for it. i said why to myself there ain't no way i can get there nah so me and cody raspberry grew up from children together and we go way back to I used to stay all night at his house and my aunt used to clean their house and stuff you know way back in the day and uh he was a he's a he's still one of my best friends and uh he said Keith give me that number I gave him the number and about a week went by and he gave me a call he said hey come down here to the shop I got something I want to show you okay so I ain't that far thing away from my mind, eighteen hundred dollars. So I go down there, man, and he took me in in the back. He said, we'll "Go behind that door right there," and it was that boat, uh, Apex Eight. He had purchased that boat for me. It meant a lot to me. Um, <laughs> it really did. But in a way, he said, "That your boat here?" I said, "What I owe you?" I said, "I can pay you in payments." He said, "Don't even worry about it." You know, from there, mm, uh, <laughs> in 2013, I moved to Memphis, Tennessee in 20, 2012. Moved to Memphis, Tennessee in 2012, and I had to find me a bow shop for, I mean, a, a, a practice area. So I looked around and found uh, everything archery is a professional bow shop in Memphis. And I started going there, buying my arrows and shooting and practicing. And uh, in 2013, they had a tournament to come up at the professional bow shop at Everything Archery in Memphis, Tennessee. And uh, I signed up for that one. I signed up for it and uh, I got in there and I shot against a guy that shot for 
Hoyt. It's a boat company. He shot for the team Hoyt. And I beat him. I beat him shooting. And I won first place. And I won like $800 worth of accessories for my boat. And the Channel 9 News did a story on us for that tournament for St. Jude fundraiser. And that right there, that really ticked my ticket. That made me just keep on and keep on persevering for every opportunity that I get. I had become an ASA member and um, it was, you got you got perks, you know, uh, in an ASA tournament, you can win up to $30,000 for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday if you win first place. And if you win three first places, which you have to travel to go to the ASA tournaments. And if you win three ASA tournaments, you can qualify, you are qualified, not can qualify, you are qualified to shoot for a million dollars at Las Vegas. Now, um, the behind the tournament at the professional boat shop, then they had the national championship to come to Memphis. And they had it in all states. And uh, I had been going to this other archery building where I could shoot and practice everything, you know, purchase stuff for my boat. And uh, I signed up to go for that one. And it was a few people in there. I was nervous now. I was nervous, but I wouldn't skate. But uh, I practiced and I practiced and I practiced. A lot of times at that boat shop, I can't remember the name of it, Hunter's Haven, or I can't remember the exact name of it. But anyway, at that time, when I go up there, this, when I go up there, I'm being real, I be the only black man, you know, and I just stay focused on what I'm doing. You know, I don't look around, I don't pay no attention. I know when the line is hot, you can't go out in front of the line because the line means people are shooting. So as I shoot and I'm, I kind of want to say I'm, I'm super good, but I'm good, you know, and I hit a lot of my bullseye. And the guys would get intimidated and pack their stuff up and leave. Really. When I shot in that, um, in the national, I was treated a certain way, you know, but I knew where all my boundary lines were all the way around me, even when I, where I sit, even where I stand, even when I get ready to shoot. Because they, uh, the, the, uh, I guess he was the director of the tournament. Anyway, we are in between lines. And I'm making sure that I am not touching no line, not cross this line, and shoot at the appropriate time. And he tell me, don't step on the line. My foot not touching the line, but that was throw me off. But still and yet, I stayed focused. And I made it look good when I shot. I was dressed to the T. I had my blue shorts on, I had my blue shirt on, my white cane ghost, and I had a blue bow. And when I roll out my arrows, I spin them and put them in, and I was shooting. <laughs> I shot my heart out, you know. And uh, after the tournament, we got the they got the rankings. I made the the magazine list, Archer, Archery Magazine, and it showed that I was ranked number four in the state of Tennessee, 2014 and 2015. I made the history in 2014, but actually, I bought it to life in 2015. And, uh, you know, I went by there after the tournament and stuff. And uh, <laughs> me and the guy that worked there, we was talking. And I just up and just told him, I said, well, you know one thing. What's that, Key? They knew me by first name. I was him. What's that? I said, I'm the first black man in the world to rank in a national championship. They took it as a joke. But it was true. I am the first African American in the United States in America and in the world to rank in a national championship in archery. And that's a legacy. Something I would die proud of. So that's pretty much basically my story. And that's the story of Keith Blackfoot Mosley. It's a blessing and I thank God for it. So it's about the best that I can do for who I am and where I come from. Huh?